everyone. Hello and welcome back on collegedunia.com. Today we are joined with Dr. D. Vasudevan. He is principal at PSNA College of Engineering. So thank you so much, sir, for joining us today. We are really glad to have you here. Thank so, you. So please tell us about your journey as principal of PSNA College and how do you describe your leadership style in the education sector? Actually, I, I have been in this institute from uh, the year 1989. I joined as the associate lecturer. That time the position was there in the faculty. Now only we are starting with the assistant professor. Uh, from 99 and gradually and I had become the principal in the year of 2019. And uh, usually I got a great faith in the academic leadership. And you will be the, moreover, I want to have a participative management. I'll make everyone to participate in the team. I am having a very great faith in the teamwork. And I will make everyone in the organization to participate and involve in their organization duties. This is my style of leadership. It's great, sir. You, had, you told that you believe in the team work. So, sir, how, please share your insights how you and your team uh, like uh, make your college more welcoming to students of different caste, creed or economic backgrounds. Yes, sir. Actually, from the year 2002, we started admitting foreign students. We had students from Bhutan, Ethiopia, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Malaysia, Sudan, and in India, we also we are having students from other states, especially from Northeast India, Kerala, Andamans, Bihar, etc. And uh, usually the environment in the campus is very conducive for this cosmopolitan life. Even though it is on the southernmost part of Tamil Nadu, it is having a very good connectivity. We are having a very good airport at Madurai, which is about 75 kilometers from our institute and good connected train connectivity and apart from that the Canterbury campus is useful to foreign students because the medium of instruction is strictly English the, everyone in the campus are able to deal with students from foreign environment including our teachers, our laboratory technicians, the other peoples in the campus, there is like the persons in the hostel, library, gymnasiums, everywhere they have, they are used to how to deal with the foreign students. Thereby, we are fit to receive them and fit to educate them. And many foreign students have studied here and they are in good positions in their country now. We are having a vast group of alumni network and we are having alumni associations in Singapore, Dubai, New York, like that where we are having a good group of our alumni are there. Uh, it, this will really make us very easy for us to accommodate foreign students. That's great, sir. Like a lot of foreign students are also joining PSNA College. So, so and regarding this uh, economics, oh, I had to call another thing. Various fields. Now we got uh, admissions through various categories. One is by government quota, and another one is by management quota. Where the government quota is strictly for the students who are coming from Tamil Nadu, and uh, their fee as well as the management quota fee also very much affordable. A Sunday, the government quota fee is 66,500 for management quota fee is 99,500. Both are, when compared with the colleges which are having NAR of ranking like us, it is very affordable when you compare it with the cost of education in Delhi, in Mumbai, or in any other cosmopolitan cities. We take that we are nearly 50% for the money. And uh, for the people who are coming from bigger economic background, there are a lot of scholarships are available and we are having a separate scholarship department uh, which will work with the students. They will identify which scholarship will suit them and we will get the scholarship for the economically bigger students 
mostly everyone who are truly economical weaker they get a scholarship either in a state government or from trusts or from central government so first it had great sir so uh, please share your long term vision that not only for the like uh, grooming students academic uh, in their academic lives but also uh, so that they can achieve excellence in their professional lives uh, our vision itself is a far sighted one we should remember and thank thank our founder rs kodan raman who had envisioned to have this institution here and the excellent vision coined by him the our vision is to provide a world class engineering education for individuals to become technologically superior socially conscious and responsible citizen for welfare of the mankind this is our vision we are actually very strictly market watching as well as focusing towards that vision and uh, in that we to make our students and excellent professionals we are having a well thought and well designed road map when a student comes to the institute we are having a well structured student induction program in the induction program is a launching pad for the students from a school life to the academic life in the engineering college campus this student induction program actually prepares him for engineering education and we are having a well thought after curriculum we basically affiliated to anna university chennai it is one of the renowned university in india the academic council and the board of studies which has which are having members a senior faculty members as members the industry corporate leaders as members of the board of studies they give a curriculum which is very accustomed to the demands of the industry as updated and we are also having a process in the institute where every faculty say if you take a department of civil engineering the department of civil engineering will be having an academic council and that academic council will be having a members from in this relevant industries and the relevant with the relevant skills they will go through the curriculum they will identify any curriculum gap they will identify the curriculum gap and they will interact with the faculty and both they will form a content how to fill that curriculum gap so based upon that add on subjects will be made and based on that add on syllabuses will be given for the individual courses so the requirement of the industry will be taken care and that after this what we do no we nourish, nourish the skills of the students that is we want to improve the skills not only knowledge the skills for that we are having a many things like industry sponsored laboratories and we find internships for the students both in summer and winter and uh, we give some trainings by the industry people so that to make them job ready because of that only we are able to get jobs for every students every eligible students who complete the degree in the campus if we take in the last year 1069 students from the campus had grabbed job jobs in the campus itself this is nearly about 90 to 95% because another 10% they refuse jobs because they may have some family business they may go for higher education so but nearly everyone who is eligible who completes the courses they get the job this is the situation in the campus that's great sir so also that tell us about the challenges you faced to like uplift the quality of your education quality of education offerings that is the best practice in the industry yes what's your question is i think a small doubt may it's about the best practice about the industries yes yes how what challenges you faced to uplift the quality of education 
so that the student has uh, the challenges faced by the challenges faced by uh, uh, challenges faced by you to quality of education of your institution oh okay sir the challenges actually the ch- the tough challenge of some date is the main challenge is the it is not only for us it is for all engineering educations because the rapidity with which the technology grows in the industry if we if you take back a two decades back if you have a car for getting an another car that is an improved version of the car or another category of a car it will take another one year minimum one year one and a half years if you take a, a hindustan motors previously if they come out with ambassador cars means if they come out with mark 1 well, to go to mark 2 that is in 1980s i'm talking about it will take 5 years that is a shelf life of your product your product life takes shelf life of your product will takes 5 years but it is not the case now because of the rapidity of the technological improvement every one month you are coming out with a new car every one month you are coming out with a new mobile phone with new technology like that it comes to the technology growth this way for by with high rapidity we the cope up with that technology group we have to redesign our academic curriculum that is the biggest challenge faced by entire academia that is particularly in engineering this, this is this we are also facing because of it what happens is when you give out students if you are not careful automatically they are not become employable yeah. that is the big challenge the second big challenge is the students now of late that is in last one or two years in this part of india their choice deviates from engineering to other fields because of that we feel little less demand for our seats so like you are doing really a great job making the student industry ready and 90 more than 95% of the student getting job from your college so so at college india we have lot of students looking for the prospective college for the admission so any suggestions you would like to give to current youth and aspiring students for aspiring students the thing is the engineer they should do that they should uh, first should they should be aware that the engineering education or the purpose of joining an engineering college is completely different from what they had in the school they are, they are joining an engineering college to become an practicing engineer so what the, in the engineering they what they do is here in the college they inculcate they not only impart knowledge that they not only impart skill that they will impart attitude they will bring behavior changes and thereby they will make them into a employable engineer and a successful practicing professional that is the job of engineering college so it is not just a place where subjects are taught and examinations are conducted it is not there it is not like that a student's perspective should not be like that the parents should not also look this like that because here we need the entire remolding of the students and make them adaptable to a world class engineering profession this needs lot of molding in the campus that thing the students should aware mostly an engineering education should be a in campus one a daily like an arts college student should not come at home that is our my uh, advice that uh, that molding the students as well as that parents should have before come to the taking up an engineering education it's great sir thank you so much sir for sharing your golden views with us so we have learned a lot from you today so thank you so much sir for joining us today.